Well, aloha, everyone, and happy Independence Day. Well, I am Ryan Ashpole, pastor of Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu, near world-famous Diamond Head. I'm bringing you greetings on our nation's 247th birthday. What a wonderful opportunity we have to celebrate our nation and the freedoms we have as Americans. Well, today I invite you to consider the price of freedom. Let's think about the price of freedom. So, for example, what did it cost our forefathers? According to Wikipedia, the total loss of life uh, throughout the Revolutionary War is largely unknown, as was typical in wars of the era. Diseases such as smallpox claim more lives than the battle itself. Between 1775 and 1782, a smallpox epidemic broke out throughout North America, killing an estimated 130,000 among all its population during those years. One historian suggests that Washington's, George Washington's decision to have his troops inoculated against the disease was one of his most important decisions. Well, that's kind of interesting. I, I didn't know that. Approximately 6,800 troops were killed in battle, while at least 17,000 died from disease. The majority of those dying from disease died while prisoners of war of the British, mostly in the prison ships in New York Harbor. The number of patriots seriously wounded or disabled by the war has been estimated as many as 25,000. By the way, one historian estimated that the uh, almost 25,000 Americans who died in the Revolutionary War, those killed in action and those who died as a result of disease, represented almost 1% of the total population of the United States of that time. That is a huge price to pay for the freedom that we can enjoy today. When we consider our spiritual freedom, however, there was an even greater price that was paid. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, gave his life, friends, so that we might have life, abundant life now, and eternal life forevermore. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and everything in between, died on a cruel cross and paid the price for sin that we could never pay. His body was broken. His blood was shed. He took our place so that we might live. He brought us from the darkness into his glorious light. He brought us out of slavery into freedom. He brought us out of Satan's terrible kingdom of unrighteousness into his, our Lord's glorious kingdom of righteousness. The Apostle Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us or a sin offering for us in, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Wow, what an incredible gift that he gave to us. Bible scholars call this the great exchange. Jesus took our death and gave us his life. He took our sin and gave us his righteousness. He took our shame and gave us his glory. He took our rejection and gave us his acceptance. He became an outcast, friend, so that we might become part of his forever family. But listen to the price that Jesus paid for our freedom. It was predicted by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before Christ was even born. Isaiah 53, chapter 53, verse 3 through 6. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, acquainted with grief. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his stripes, we are healed. All weak like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Friends, I'm so thankful for the freedom that I, the freedoms that I have as an American. But I see those freedoms being gradually but continually eroded. And what's the good news about our spiritual freedom in Jesus Christ? It will never be eroded, friends. It will never be eroded. No one can take it away. No one can steal it. 
The devil, as powerful as he is, cannot strong arm our freedom in Christ away from us. After all, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So what can happen? We can let go of our precious spiritual freedom. We can give it away. We can let it slip away unnoticed. Paul warns us in Galatians 5.1, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore, and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Do not be entangled again by a yoke of slavery. Stand firm. Friends, a terrible price was paid on the cross for your spiritual freedom. A huge price was paid. It was paid, obtained for you and for me at a tremendous cost. cost. So don't give it up, friends. Don't let it go. Live in the spiritual freedom that Jesus Christ purchased for you when he died upon the cross. Live in the spiritual freedom that Jesus Christ purchased for you when he died upon the cross. I'm going to pray in just a moment. And let me share something I'm excited about as I am every week, and that's this Sunday, July 9th. We're going to begin our new teaching series, Summer in the Psalms. Isn't that great? Summer in the Psalms. We're going to start right at the beginning, Psalm chapter 1. Please invite someone to join you at 1035 a.m., either in person, in the building, or if you can't join us in person, please join us online for the live broadcast on either Facebook or our YouTube channel. Just search Facebook for Honolulu AG, uh, search YouTube channel for Honolulu Assembly of God. We live stream every Sunday morning at 10.35 a.m. to both locations. And by the way, if you can join us in person, the 9.30 a.m. Bible study class, adult Bible class, will continue to study the book of Romans, and it is powerful. Are you ready to pray, friends? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's, let's do it. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the freedoms that you purchased for me. Thank you, Jesus, that you're willing to go to the cross and experience that excruciating agony, agonizing pain, Lord, that you experienced when you died upon the cross. Pay for the freedom that I can have in you. Help me to be thankful for it and to never take it for granted, Lord. Help me to rejoice in it every day. I I surrender. I'm so thankful, Lord. I surrender everything I am and everything I have to you. And I pray that, Lord, not only for myself, but for everyone watching, every man, every woman, every young person, every boy, every girl. May they look to you and be saved. May they repent of their sin, declare you as their Lord, and know the wonderful, glorious freedom that you have for each one. And we rejoice in you. We give you all the praise, Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Aloha and aloha keakua. God loves you. God is love. Well, there's more life-changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to being with you again next time. Until then, aloha. We'll see you later. God bless. Bye-bye.